Hello and welcome. I hope you're safe and well. Today's exciting episode is me making two jackets while almost finishing them and taking a vintage 1950s dating quiz. It's very exciting. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So last episode I made a reversible jacket and I wasn't totally thrilled with it. I mean, I like it more than I did when I made it, but it was a bit long in the back and a bit big. So I made these two other ones. The One's a butterick pattern and one's a simplicity pattern. And yeah, as you can see, I haven't finished the hand stitching, but they're mostly done. So these are the two patterns. And yeah, I decided to do one from each. So the butterick one is I've done this sort of beigey gold one in the middle, so it's cropped. And I do like the white one, the origami one, but I decided to do one from each. And this one here, again, I did the cropped one, but they also have a longer version. And this one has sleeves. So the first one I showed you is just front and back. And the second one I showed you is front, back, sleeves. So this is the second one I showed you, the goldeny coloured one with the flowers. It's actually a Liberty of London print and I bought it and I loved it when I bought it. But then, I don't know, I kind of fell out of love with it. But then I turned it 90 degrees, so it's sort of going up and down and now I love it again. And so these, are, uh, yeah, so it's reversible. So I'm doing two different sides and I love the big fluffy um, monster in Monster Zinc, hence the aqua and mauve. The mauve has flowers and it actually has aqua flowers in there as well. And this floaty one on the right is the, it's a cotton vol. It's a vintage print floral and that's going to be the reverse side of the first one that I showed you. So the two in the middle are reverse sides of each other. So you just need one neck band thing. That's why it's on one and then I'm going to sew it onto the other one. So yeah, now that I've, so I had to make them and then I put them on here just to see what they look like. And now, as you can see, I've got loads of pins, like, so I split the seam allowance and now I just have to hand stitch it in, all into place. So I used a sort of browny mustard golden thread on this one. I'm doing it by hand because I don't really want the visible top stitching. This one, I used a sort of white, creamy white colored thread <laughs> yeah, so I listed every colour thread that I used and as riveting as that is, I think I'll just, yeah, I took off that narrative and uh, narration and so, yeah, as I was watching, as I was doing all this, I had YouTube videos on and there's this one, um, Carolina, she does vintage clothing she sometimes makes historical clothing anyway she also loves vintage like secondhand books and she found this one on the internet archive that's um a 1950s dating guide for teenagers and there's this quiz in it about whether you're a good date so yes while i show you the little bit that i did because so basically i made two more jackets like last episode i just showed you and these ones are even more simple to make so basically i just sewed the few pieces together to create one jacket and then i hand stitched all this um the seam allowance back and once that was done i pinned the two reversible sides together to make one reversible jacket and then machine sew them and then turn it out and yeah so once i get to the finished jackets i'll um talk about them but until then let's take a look at these fabulous questions and there's a link to her video and this um the internet archive copy of this book in the description box below so here we go oh and it's binary so i apologize for that just you know any gender any <laughs> sexual preference you just take the questions that you want I just think they're all hilarious so girls one side is for girls and one side is for boys because it's for like teenagers in the 1950s anywho so we'll start with one side and then we'll do the other one conversation piece okay question one when someone mentions Bill Lawrence, no idea who that is, Peggy Ann Garner, Lou, okay, famous people, do you A, know who they're talking about, clearly not, or B, have something to add to the subject? I mean, if it's a work function, yes. If it's about um, 
pop culture? Probably not. T- number two, can you talk as easily with teachers, parents or your boyfriend's kid sister as you can with your own crowd? Yes. Three, when Sandy's paying your bus, or oh, Sandy's a boy, do you resist any temptation to hint about all the dates you've had with Harry, Dick and Tom? Are you tempted to try and make If you're dating four people at once, never would. Um, Are you ever tempted to um, try and make any of them or all of them jealous? No, that just seems incredibly disrespectful. Like all of it seems like too much work to me and also rude and disrespectful. So no. But also just a massive waste of time. I don't get the whole juggling people thing. Anywho, number four. Do you, I'm going to say men instead of boys because it's just too creepy otherwise. Do men you date enjoy a discussion on your back porch as much as parking? Okay, so do, are they at all interested in you or do they just want to have, are we allowed to see sex on this? Oh, anyway, um, well that's a weird question. I guess it's about self-esteem perhaps. Yeah, I do get our, like, proposition by a lot of creepy guys then I just turn them down but um yeah nice it seems like a self-esteem question to me and it's uh, I think it's fair to say I've got a healthy ego so no I don't put up with um, creeps like that so five can you put a shy boy at ease Mm, to me shyness is just being self-absorbed in a particular way so no, if someone wants to be self-absorbed, they should go out with someone as equally self-absorbed, in my opinion. Just my opinion. <laughs> you can have all the shy boys, all the shy men to you. I'm, I will not compete. Not at all. Number six, at a party. Yeah, I wouldn't go. <laughs> I'd just stay home. But okay, we'll pretend. At a work function, do you go out of your way to talk with people you don't know well why else would you go to a party um so so yes um I really only go to one set of work functions <laughs> but also yeah so seven are you a good listener even when the topic of conversation leaves you cold um yeah I don't know it, it depends how it depends on the motives of the other person if they're just repulsive or disrespectful absolutely not but if they're a genuine human being then yeah so that is the section for conversation piece the next section is just looking and this is about health and beauty i think do you follow the bath a day shampoo a week routine i don't have a bath i only got a shower so yes but i do like smelling of shampoo and um clothes like my clothes smell of laundry detergent and my hair smells of shampoo and conditioner and I quite like that so um yes I like that freshly cleaned and (laughs) smell rather than perfume and um hairspray or whatever number two can you proudly boast that your slip never shows and that your shoes are shone um no (laughs) I'm a little scruffy um, number three, is the way you wear your hair now the result of analysing your face and features? No, I'm not superficial. I wear my hair up if it's annoying me and down if it's, you know, I need a little bit of warmth, then, <laughs> then I wear my hair down. But um, four, so very practical. Four, do you know enough about colour fabrics and style to buy your own clothes on a limited budget? Well, yes, but I'd rather make them. Five, do you really need to apologise for your appearance when you have unexpected callers? Mm, I'd probably go yell at my doorman if there were any unexpected callers. But, um... I don't know. I'm I'm wearing yoga pants and a, a t-shirt at the moment, so um, I think that gives you the answer you need. Number six, at a party, do you forget what you have on? Excuse me. Um. 
oh, do you fuss with your outfit constantly when you're out at an event? No, I don't. Um, seven, can your makeup, I don't wear makeup, can your makeup be counted on not to inspire wisecracks from the opposite sex? Wow. Um, you probably might, sounds like you might be hanging out with the wrong sort of people, but, um, no, I never wear makeup. Eight, are you, oh, this is me deciding that I have to make more jackets, so, um, yeah, I'm going to make loads more and I get out a bunch of different fabrics and see um, this one here, it's got two different fabrics and the pieces of this short cropped jacket are so small that I was able to fit them on fat quarters. So you need four fat quarters to make a jacket, which is one yard of fabric and plus you need a bit for the neckband but I decided, decided in the next one I'm not going to have a neckband and on this other jacket that takes about a yard and a, th and a quarter I suppose I decide that if I turn back the um like the neck part and make sort of fake lapels and turn up the cuffs it just looks really cool. So I also decide I want to make a million more of this one as well. Well, not a million, but at least a couple. So I got a, a bunch of um, fabrics. Most of them are cottons. There's some cotton falls, so light cottons, but also some cotton. Um, yeah, so this is me deciding that I like both the patterns that I've tried out. But the one that has the neck bit around it, um, I'm going to not do the neck bit. I'm just that one there takes about a yard of fabric in the extra small size and this one in the small size takes about a yard and uh, a quarter maybe so yeah I decide I'm going to make loads more and um, yeah I'm going to get out a bunch of fabrics in a moment and show you them all and do different combinations so while I do that I will keep you entertained with more questions. So we did the makeup one. Number eight, are you proud of your posture? So how you stand? Meh, I guess. Nine, are crisp and fresh good object adjectives to describe your general appearance? Mm, I guess. Slightly disheveled. Well, it's supposed to be when you're on a date. Well, then yes, of course, you're going to get dressed properly for a date, wouldn't you? Um, uh, hypothetically, um, manners, the next section is manners matter. Okay. So question one, are you as cour courteous to your mother as your boyfriend's mother as friendly? Uh, well, um, my mother has been dead for decades, but, um, oh, I really, really, you know, those, um, guys who have the domineering mums that they're afraid of? No. Absolutely, that is deal breaker for me. Absolutely not. If you do not respect your mother, if you are afraid of your mummy, then no, absolutely not. I was um, living and working in India, gosh, a long time ago now. And um, like once a week or once every two weeks, I would go to this American cafe. It was just, you know, that TV show MASH? Well, it was like that. And they literally played the theme song to MASH, but they played the song with the lyrics. And if you know the lyrics, hilarious. Anyway, um, so it was there having a piece of chocolate cake, being very Western, having chocolate cake and having a um, coffee, like a, you know, a proper coffee. And because, yeah, I do not like, don't like milky tea and I don't like sugar in any of my beverages. So chai was just like the opposite of what I like to drink. So, yeah, once every two weeks, I was like, I've got to have a coffee. So I had coffee and chocolate cake. And these these Western couple sat down at the table beside me. And um, I think they'd seen me at work because I was working with orphans and abandoned children and oh my God, they were, I, I don't know, they seemed to, they gave the impression that they were well off and that their son was really rich, but he had his problems. And this woman just, just like, she obviously was trying to find, like touring around all these NGOs, trying to find a do-gooder, a wife for her um, son who was like successful, but he sounded like a terrible human being, basically. And yeah, so it was just, I was just like, 
oh my god, once a week, once every two weeks, I get to have some chocolate cake and a decent coffee. Leave me alone, woman. So yes, I absolutely hate, um, I would never go out with anyone who had a, um overbearing parent like that, just because the profound lack of respect I just do not have time for. If the question's about my behaviour, then yeah, I'm respectful respectful towards everyone. So um if they've deserve if if they are deserving of respect, obviously, not if they're, you know, just there. <laughs> I get a lot of people who pretend to be interested in me simply for my assets. I'm sure all women get the same thing. Okay, so number two. Are you usually ready when your date arrives? Yes, it would be. I just think it's unfair to make people wait. Three, when you run into some of your friends on a date, do you always introduce your escort? Uh, Well, yeah, it would be rude not to. Or do you always refuse to break a date with good old Ted when a fancy invitation turns up? So you've agreed to a date with someone you don't like, wouldn't do that, um, and now you want to get out of it because a better offer turns up. Yeah, I'd, I'm not someone who would date two people in the first place, but no, I'd just state the obvious and say I didn't want to go in, out with them in the first place, and then I'd probably just stay home. <laughs> anyway, I'm coming across as very antisocial not antisocial I'm just happy in my own company and okay number five are are your voice and actions usually as ladylike as your appearance Ooh, (laughs) that's a wrong way to ask that question but yes um yes I guess I, I mean I swear but I don't think that's a terrible I don't think that's a bad thing six do you always resist the temptation to powder your nose or comb your hair in public? I don't understand this question. I don't wear makeup, but um, do you get out your compact at the table or are you always running off to the bathroom? No. But, you know, if I have a meal that has spinach in it I will ask if I've got spinach in my teeth so I guess that's not very ladylike but it's practical okay seven two more questions in this group seven does your date get your main attention at a party when there are more attractive men present wow I am not that superficial (laughs) I would be I would just be offended if anyone thought I was that superficial um, I guess the equivalent would be if I went to a party where there are a lot of, you know, um, industry people there. No, I don't go and chase, like if I go to industry events, there are certain people who will only talk to the producers who do really expensive projects. So no, I'm not one of those ones. Eight, do you save handholding and limpid looks? for pride oh okay public displays of affection yeah I just think straight people just need to keep that at home I mean if you have any interest in each other sexually still why are you even going out on a date but yeah I mean obviously um queer people then who've only had you know marriage rights for the like the merest split second do all the public displays of attention you want, but if you're a straight people, like straight couple, I mean, I just think it's sad. But that's just me and probably people from my era. But um, yeah, no, absolutely not for me personally. But I do like it when you know you see one of those genuine couples, and the one's just sitting there reading a book, and the other one will come in the room, and the one reading the book will look up and smile and. I I do think that's really sweet, but it's not like performative at all, if you get what I mean. Anyway, next section is getting along with people. Yeah, because they seem like I'm really good at that. Okay, 
Number one, do you enjoy being with your family and feel they understand you pretty well? No, absolutely not. I found out after my mum passed away, um, I found out that everyone, all the family friends called me the Cinderella. And if you know the Cinderella story, which everyone does, the, you know, the overbearing, um, tyrannical female parent, the weak, spineless male parent, and then the two um, malicious other siblings. Yeah. Everyone used to call me the Cinderella. And I mean, if you know a family is like that, why don't you step in and, you know, help the innocent children? Anywho, question two, do you like working on group projects? Are you as good at taking suggestions as making them? Yep, work well with people. Three, can you take a joke, accept a compliment without blushing or criticism without getting mad? Yes, oh, well, you know, not the, oh, we can't say the R word on here, but yeah, not sexist or racist jokes, absolutely not, no no transphobic, nothing like that. Anything that punches, like, just makes other people feel, tries to make other people feel bad and trying to drag them down. I just don't see the point. Like, if you feel insecure, then don't, don't advertise the fact and also just don't. But, um, yeah, I work well with others and, um, yeah, the whole joke thing, I just, no, I will always step in and um, protect someone who's being picked on for shoresies. Okay, four, do you value your friendships with women as much as you do with men and those who are gen- gendered non-binary? Yeah, of course. Would you refuse to break a date with a woman to accept one with what? Would you refuse to break? Oh, right. If you're going to uh, brunch with someone, would you dump them so you could go out with a guy? Uh, with a guy? No. Hmm. I'm not very interesting, am I? Okay, so do you refrain from... Oh, and then do you hit on other women's husbands or boy boyfriends. I just think the term boyfriend when you're an adult is weird, but no, absolutely not. If he's someone else's problem, that's, you know, no. Five is about, do you argue or quarrel when you're on a date? Mm, No, am I misunderstanding? Like, I think they're asking, is your behavior too demanding? Are you a bit too much? Um, Well, I don't know. It's not for me to say, is it? But No, I don't think so. Are you quick to make up a spat with a friend? It depends. If it's something about fundamental, like about human rights and disagree on something that matters, then no. But if it's something that doesn't matter, why would I even be arguing about it? Um, Six, do you usually have a good time at parties? Oh, I usually try and get out of them. <laughs> but yeah, once I'm there, I'm fine. Um, I mean, why would you not? So seven, do you like almost everyone in your class? Um, oh, it's, it's like for school kids. Um, well, the most recent thing I've done is go to grad school. So no, but you don't have to. Not everyone in the world has to like you and you don't have to like everyone. That's absolutely fine. As long as you're not disrespectful about it. Eight, can a man date you three times without your trying to make this relationship into a great romance? Oh, like if after one date, do you dream about marrying a guy? Mm. Well, I wouldn't go out with someone three times if I still wasn't sure whether I was interested, if that's, I don't think that's quite what they're asking. I wouldn't waste anyone else's time and I wouldn't waste my time, but I also don't really daydream about people. Nine, do you always resist the temptation to gossip? That question's worded weirdly. But yeah, I don't really gossip. I occasionally, like every now and then, I do hear gossip about myself. And I just, I'm always astounded, like 
that anyone could believe anything like that about me, but also like of all the people to gossip about, I am probably the least interested. Well, I mean, I have survived a lot, but the stuff that people make up about me is just like, like if you know who I am and all the things I've survived and then you make up this pitiful things. It's usually people who know some of the things I've actually survived and I'm always, always astounded. I'm like, so you know. <laughs> anyway, long story short, no, I have no temptation to gossip at all. And I'm a little bit, well, very judgmental about those who do, just because I know how damaging it is to innocent people. Um, question 10. Are you considerate of a man's wallet? What? Oh, this is for like 1950s. Wow. Well, I don't like gold diggers who target me. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't behave that way towards anyone else either. So that's the end of that section. Now we have the last section for the girls is called Yours Truly. So it's about how are you interesting to other people? Number one, can you spend an evening by yourself without getting bored? Yeah, well, I spent the entire pandemic alone. So yeah, not a problem. I'm very amusing to myself. Number two, do you have definite opinions Hells yes. And ideas of your own that don't change to fit the mood of opinions of every man you date. Okay, I find that question offensive. But yeah, I'm super opinionated. But I mean, sometimes I do realise that I'm wrong or that I haven't considered information. So I mean, but if you're talking about that Julia Roberts film where she just like changes, she's like, oh, I like eggs, Benedict. Oh, I like fried eggs. Oh, I like boiled eggs. You know, um, yeah, no, I'm not like that. I just, I I mean, I'm capable of being polite. But yeah, I wouldn't just pretend for the sake of pretending. Three, can you say a graceful no to a parking party, a cigarette, a cocktail that you don't want. Um, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> the problem isn't women saying no. <laughs> that is not the problem in that situation. Um, four, can you play at least one sport well? Yes, and I have the sashes and ribbons and patches to prove it. And when I was in school, you, um, got a whole afternoon a week off if you played a sport and I think my teachers you know upon reflection I think my teachers just kicked all the smart kids out because our um sports teams were always like the brains trust and um yeah I think that's what yeah it might have just been at the uh the schools I went to but it just seemed like all the uh, you know the people who got the school prizes at the end of the year were always the ones in the sports groups. But yes, I can play lots of them. Five, do you read at least one newspaper a day? No. One magazine a week? No. And two or three books a month? Oh yeah, I love reading books. And I suppose I do read news on, but not like physical newspapers. This is from the 1950s. So, yeah, I guess I read the equivalent. And, yes, love books. They're awesome. Uh, do you have more than a lukewarm... This is number six. Do you have more than a lukewarm interest in art, music, drama, literature or the dance? I don't know what a the dance is. Actually, there's that Jennifer Gardner film, um, 13 Going on 30, where they do that pop culture dance um all of them do the same dance it's like the nut bush but it's a different one thriller yeah no I don't know any of those ones and um what are the other things art I went to a school like Juilliard you know in that movie fame where you have to audition to get into a school my mom made me go to one of those and I was a music scholarship student so um yes all those things art music drama literature um definite literature and art by choice and drama well I'm a playwright screenwriter so yes music ugh, 
I mean, yes, I'm classically trained. Seven, do you take seriously what health books say about diet and sleep having a lot to do with pep? Um, do you get enough sleep? and eat properly so that you have enough energy. I mean, I know it. I don't always follow it. Eight, can you turn down a date in order to study for a history exam you'd like a good grade in? Well, yeah, but it would, I mean, if I was actually interested in the past and I just explained that, you know, I've got a work thing to do and ask if there was another time they were free. And number nine, do you finish most projects you start? Yeah, I guess. I mean, there's like three books I've not finished reading out of like 10,000. So yeah, pretty good average. And um, well, speaking of, that's only the girls half of this question, wonderful questionnaire. Um, I think we're going to have to do the boys part on another day because... Um, I've got to the end of all the things, all the footage I had. And, um, all the images are from Pinterest and I just Googled vintage fashions, 1950s. And the there's a link below to Carolina's uh, um, video. She does all the questions and also the internet archive of that vintage book. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope it's been interesting. I'll show you once I finally do the hand stitching, the finishing on them, I'll show you them. So in a, the next episode or the one after. And yeah, I'm, as you can see, there's like one of them has two bits. Well, a front and a back and a sleeve. This one has. And then the other one has the front, the back and that neck um, the neck band thing, but I don't think I'll do the neck band in the next one. So I will keep you updated. But for now, that's it. I hope you've been entertained and yeah, happy sewing. I love those two beigey floral fabrics together. I think they look adorable.